الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Recently during COVID, you know, I did start checking a lot more on uh, YouTube and things like that I noticed all of these terms that are flying around you know, Madkhali and Wahhabi and things like this Yeah, I've been aware of them in the past but uh, didn't really think too much about it just, just kept my head down It just reminded me of uh, when I met Sheikh Rabi'a uh, it was in 2009 and I went on Hajj, alhamdulillah, with uh, a hamla called Mandakar. And this is the hamla, the Hajj group of Sheikh Falah Mandakar, uh, Rahmatullah Ali, Rahmatullah Wasi'an. Sheikh Rabi'a, hafidahullah, was the Sheikh or one of the Shiuch of Sheikh uh, Mandakar, Falah Mandakar, Rahmatullah Ali. We were there in Mecca doing Hajj. I can't remember exactly which point of the Hajj it was. But anyway, we, one of the brothers came to me and said, would you like to go with us to see Sheikh Rabi'a? And I had absolutely no idea who Sheikh Rabi'a was at the time. SubhanAllah. I ended up sitting in a car which, next to Sheikh Falah Mandakar, Rahmatullah Ali. And we went to, to a house uh, somewhere in Mecca and I walked into the front door, uh, really just going with the flow. And we entered this huge library. And uh, Sheikh Rabi'a, Hafidahullah, was, you know, quite a, an old man. Um, with uh, with henna in his beard, I, I seem to remember, and th there was like um, an L-shaped seating arrangement in the corner of the library, and we just sat there. My Arabic was even worse than it was than it is now, so I didn't understand much of what was going on. I just sat there and I thought, Subhanallah, this is uh, this is the Sheikh of Sheikh Farah, Rahmatullah Ali, Allah Akbar. Anyway, so anyway, that was the experience. I, you know, we finished the Hajj. Uh, I went back, yeah, and just recently I've been hearing this word madkhali, madkhali, madkhali a lot and then I just yeah, remembered that story and then I mentioned it in a tweet the other day <laughs> and immediately people came back saying ah, oh, it's always the reverts that become madkhalis I was like, wait, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a second none of these books here behind me are written by Sheikh uh, Rabia and uh, I, I studied with Sheikh in Kuwait for example, I'll tell you exactly um, uh, Sheikh Abu uh, Salah Hamid Hisham Tahiri Hafidhullah Ta'ala, this is mainly, you know, because his masjid is, is closest to my house. And I used to sit a lot with Sheikh um, Salim al Tawin, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, SubhanAllah. So th th those are basically the two main Sheikhs I take knowledge from, I have taken knowledge from in Kuwait. And we study from the books like Kitab al Tawheed, Aqidah Wasatiya, Amdat al Fiqh, things like that, very, you know, basic books that I study with them and just keep repeating again and again. You know, and, and other basic books as well. Like I said, during COVID, I started to look on YouTube and see what was going on. And I'd listen to what people were saying in the light of some of the things I've learned, Alhamdulillah, with the shiukh here in, in Kuwait and, you know, in the last 20 years or so. And uh, it's shocking. It's shocking, subhanAllah. Just simple, simple hadith like, Man kana yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir, fal yaqul khair wal yasmut. Yani, akhi, if you don't have anything good to say, just keep quiet. Or, um, Min husn al-islam al mar from the perfection of the uh, Islam of a person is to leave that which doesn't concern him. So imagine we follow these two advices and, and seeking knowledge, sitting with the, the ulama and understanding how much they know, how long they've studied, how much of their lives they've, they've, they've sacrificed for this ilm. And it's hard. You need a lot of patience to get to the, to the level of some of these ulama. Like Sheikh Rabi'a is a huge uh, scholar, subhanAllah. And all of the scholars are insane, and all of the all of the mankind makes mistakes. And there's a hadith that talks about um, uh, a mujtahid, and a mujtahid is not just like an ami person; it's a, it's a scholar. So to be a mujtahid, there are shuruq, there are prerequisites to get to this level. Um, these people who are able to call upon the nusus of the Quran and the hadith, they're, they're able to make qiyas and they're able to understand all of the resources available to them. These people are the mujtahidin, not us. If a mujtahid makes uh, a correct uh, ijtihad, he gets rewarded twice. If he makes an incorrect ijtihad, he gets rewarded once. Obviously for ijtihad, which is any with ikhlas, any with the sincere intention to reach the correct outcome. SubhanAllah, sir, Allah rewards the mujtahideen even if they're mistaken. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. For then, when you think about these two hadith I mentioned previously, keep quiet, or if you don't have anything good to say, and stay out of things that don't concern you. And also the fact that the ulama, 
if they make mistakes in ijtihad, they get rewarded, whether they are correct or not. So this being the case, and we just want to follow, and Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we just want to follow his sunnah, then why are we making statements like, he's a kafir, he's a kafir. Just stay away from it, ya akhi, ya Abdullah, stay away from it. It's none of your business. What You don't have to, you won't be held to account for what Bakr and Zaid are doing. You'll be held to account for what you do. I'm going to be held to account for what I do. He won't ask us about Fulan and Bakr and Zaid. He'll ask us about us. He'll ask us about our wives and our children. SubhanAllah, our families. We should just stay away from it. It's safer for us. Like making takfir of people. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever says someone is a kafir, one of them is a kafir. That means that if, if I make takfir of a brother, and he's not a kafir in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, I will be the kafir. La samhullah. So what's, what's it best to do in this case? Is it best to say, no, you double down and say, no, he's doing kufr, he's doing kufr. I don't. Allah Alam, if, if someone's doing kufr, does that make him a kafir? And he, it's none of my business to say, subhanAllah. It's none of my business. I'd rather not say, even if I feel something, I'd rather not say, let the ulama deal with it. SubhanAllah. Or ask an alim. There's no need for us to get involved, SubhanAllah. This is just my observation on the situation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us upon uh, the correct understanding of this religion, uh, this beautiful religion of Islam. A religion that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he taught to his companions. SubhanAllah, the matter, my brothers and sisters, is very easy. We follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah as closely as we can. SubhanAllah, that's all we have to do. That's all we have to do. And we try to and he advise one another. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Asr, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ By the time, verily mankind is in loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Except those who believe and do good deeds and advise one another on the truth and advise one another with patience. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.